Heaven bless you. I'm the next lady Prophet is on, and we are finishing our discussion on the fear of God, not scared of God, part three. God never intended for us to be scared of him, as if he would do us harm, but to fear and reverence him so he could do us good. When we look at the behavior of Ahab, one of the most wicked kings of Israel, when God sought to kill him for the death of innocent Naboth, the fear of God came upon Ahab, and he humbled himself before God. And God in return allowed him to live. That's according to 1 Kings 21, verses 25 through 29. But note, you better be very careful who you hook up with as a spouse because they can become your ultimate demise. The Bible said it was Jezebel, the ungodly wife Ahab married, who inspired him to do evil. How can you have a wife or a spouse that inspires you to do evil? Psalms 89 verse 7 said, God is greatly to be feared in the assembly of the saints and to be had in reverence of all them that are about him. We should be careful how we behave ourselves in the house of God, as stated in 1 Timothy 3, verse 15. But if I tarry long, that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, and is a pillar and ground of truth. Also, Psalms 100, verse 4 said, we should enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Actually, God's house should be reverenced and kept better than your own house because it represents God's dwelling. Leviticus 19 and 30 says, You shall keep my Sabbath and reverence my sanctuary. I am the Lord. If you say you are the temple of the Holy Ghost, you ought to live like it and keep yourselves clean from sin. Also, it's important when we come to God's house, we reverence Him in our heart as well as our appearance. If we can be respectful in our outer appearance according to the way we dress to come before a judge, a president, or a king, we certainly should be mindful of our appearance when we come before God to this house. Jesus told a parable in Matthew 22 verses 1 through 14 of the marriage feast as it reflects to his second coming and the hearts of mankind. But isn't it interesting that Jesus used the outward appearance of a guest that was dressed inappropriately at a wedding to make his point? In this particular parable, the host was the king, the father, who put on a wedding for his son. The king invited guests who were not initially on the guest list to attend the son's wedding. But because the ones he initially invited made excuses or didn't want to attend, the king invited the second group of people to attend. They were the least and the less fortunate that were permitted to attend this wedding. The king did this for the sake of his son, so the banquet would be full. But as the king went to greet the guest, he noticed one of the guests did not have on a wedding attire. But after questioning the man as to why he didn't have on wedding apparel to come before the king, the man couldn't give him an answer. So because this man showed no reverence or respect in attending the king's banquet, the man was thrown out of the banquet and utterly punished. As kind as the king had been to this man to allow him to come to such an auspicious occasion, the man could have at least done the least respect to him and dressed appropriately in respect of the king. Likewise, we are the least in the kingdom of God, and yet we are invited to come before God each time we enter his house to feast from the Lord's table. So the least we can do is dress respectively and appropriately at God's invitation to this house, which is called the church. David said in Psalms 84, 
What is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him? For thou hast made him a little lower than the angel, and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hand. Thou hast put all things under his feet. What a privilege, what an honor God has graciously bestowed upon us. So remember, we should never be afraid of God, never be scared of God, but we should always have a healthy fear of God.